got to the stoplight um, coming from a side road, uh, I was 30 seconds away from my apartment and um, my light was red. So I sat there for a little while and then my light turned green and I started moving across the lanes of traffic. And when I got to the last lane of the traffic that would have been coming towards me in order to go towards town, I looked and I saw a car barreling towards me. And it was really interesting because everything changed in that moment because I was like, oh, okay, this is it. I'm getting ready to die. And I had this sudden awareness at that time. I'd done this so many times before. This was, you know, nothing freaky, nothing scary. I wasn't panicked. It was so easy. So it was like time slowed like a down. Time loop. Oh, it sounds stopped. like. It was. Okay. It would. It just stopped. And so I had the chance to go. All right, kiddo, how do you want to do this? Do you want to be in the body and experience this? And I was. And I recall, you know, thinking about was there anything left for me to benefit from that? Was there anything I could put in my little basket before I went home? Um, that would be of service to me that I didn't already have. And I and I went no because I was like I've done this so many times, um, and that's that's going to hurt because this guy's going fast. And so they estimated that he blew through the light, an 81 year old gentleman, uh, at 75 miles an hour. And so wow. when I made the decision to go out of the body, there was a sound. And this was where my 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 interest in frequency began because it was like a low drone, like a bagpipe drone in the background. And I believe, um, you know, with, with the understanding of harmonics and physics, that this is what tethers us to the body. Um, and so it's that lower vibration. Hey, yo, welcome to the Godcast. Nothing is as it seems. Nothing. I mean, literally, nothing is as it seems. We took authority for truth instead of truth as our authority. The great deception is still to come. Not every human you see is human. A lot of us equate our value in life to the things that we have or the things we're able to acquire. And not the things that we're able to pass on. But just sharing this story allows those people who are just starting out to, to recognize that there's somewhere to go. Do you find solidarity within the differences or do you find division within the similarities? And it was a battle for, for my soul. It's not if you buck me the gospel. What's up now? Welcome to Godcast, the goodness over darkness podcast. Here's your host, Emmanuel Kingman. It's showtime. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Godcast, the goodness over darkness podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Kingman, and here with me for the intro is the frequency. <laughs> it's the frequency of light herself. Mimi. Hello. I just like now I can't even hold it in when I'm like (laughs) waiting to hear what's gonna come out of your mouth. I never know. (laughs) I never know. Sometimes we have to redo it. Sometimes we had to redo it once. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) This is about me number two. No way. We're keeping this one. So our special guest today was Dr. Mary Helen Hensley, and she is a great interest of many of these things that we talk about here on the goodness over darkness podcast the healing the uh the spiritual the uh, i don't necessarily want to say the conspiratorial with her but she studies ancient symbols which is why she moved to ireland uh, but also understanding the the media and the the marketing effects what they're having this like putting people in like a trance like state of inducing pleasure so there's so many different things that we touched on in this episode you guys are really going to enjoy it she is a healer of uh frequent so she had this near-death experience at 21 but she also before she was born her parents had this celestial visit which said she would be having special gifts so that happens uh she had the nde and now she heals with sound vibration frequency and light so she does a bunch of different things she can see hear and smell different things you guys are just really going to enjoy this episode 
uh, I think that uh, that'll wrap it up for the intro. But I do want to thank you all for coming out. It's a great honor to have you all here. That you know you could be anywhere else right now, and the fact that you're here with us now, it's greatly appreciated. If you want to financially support the show, you can go to patreoncom backslash goodness over darkness. And there you'll gain more access by uh, being able to watch back the Bible studies that we do every Sunday night, which are free. And you can email me with the subject Bible study in order to be part of that. And if you uh, you can also join the live Q&As that I have on the Patreon every week. Uh, if you do not want to financially support, but you are capable of supporting the show in a free way, you could like, comment, share, subscribe, rate, and review wherever you're watching this from. That would be a great help to help grow the show, and we would greatly appreciate that. So go check out Dr. Mary Helen Hensley at maryhelenhensley.com. Go to her website. We'll have all of her links in yep, the description she's got some free downloads yeah especially yeah, anyone dealing with, downloads yeah anyone dealing with covid and you know delta crime was just released in china so if anyone's dealing with that she has a free frequency download that you can listen to uh, that may help you or a loved one may help them make sure you go check out my website emmanuelkingman.com and stay tuned at the end of the episode for the outro And without further ado, here's Dr. Mary Helen Hensley. Welcome to the Godcast. Cross up on my back, I'm slaying demons. It don't matter what you call that. Searching for the truth, facts are facts until they fall flat. It's looking like a story, man, it's all cap. But it's goodness over darkness, it ain't all bad. I met my maker, but I was called back. Emmanuel, show my people they're under a spell Heaven or hell is free will I made my choice and now it's well With my soul I pray the same for you as well Welcome to the Godcast Welcome to the Godcast Hello everybody On today's episode I have on a guest whose life was changed forever Due to a car accident which induced a near-death experience She grew up with a very unique spiritual gift as well and is using all sorts of healing techniques on her clients in conjunction with her spiritual gifts she has authored nine books and co-authored several others everybody welcome dr mary helen hensley to the show welcome to the show doctor how are you i'm good thank you for having me thank you for being here it's quite the honor to meet you i have heard you many times on different podcasts so it is wonderful to have you here now on mine it's so good to be here and tell me this do you go by emmanuel so i go by emmanuel or todd uh i kind of introduced myself on the podcast as emmanuel but you know i was born todd so i don't have a problem with being called either so i'll be mary helen and you be emmanuel todd (laughs) sounds good (laughs) well we're both from the south so double barrel yeah, well, so yeah, I, I, I'm i from Philly. I moved to Georgia two years ago, and it's the best change ever because the North is just crazy chaos, and the South is just peaceful, and everyone's helping one another, and it's not at all what I was told it was when I moved down here. You know, there's, there's this image that all the Southerners hate Northerners, that they're racist, that they're stupid, and all of that's the furthest thing from the truth. It, it really right. is. Do you miss Steve Prince of cheesesteaks, though? Uh, well, I never went to Steve's, but I do miss the cheesesteaks. Yeah, uh, that is one thing. <laughs> I my... lived in Philly. Oh, okay. Where at? I miss the cheesesteaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, w- w- the the bread down here is not the same. That's the only difference, the bread. We, we make the steaks uh, pretty good. Uh, sweet peppers and bread is uh, missing, though. Do you know what's interesting is that from from having lived in the South and lived in the North and now living in Europe, the bread in the North has a far more European as in kind of a global European flavor to it. Mm. You can tell the South was set as settled by Scots and Irish um, yeah. because it's that dense kind of um, the bread is the bread is heavier um, and it's very much like the, the bread that we would have here in Ireland. Um, mm. But the the bread kind of from Philly and up is far more influenced by the Italians and the French and the, you know, like you, you can see a far more um, 
Cosmo flavor to the bread. So I would 100% agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. So Ireland, that's an interesting. How did you end up in Ireland from South Carolina and Virginia? And, and the for real or the or the fun story? <laughs> uh, whichever you prefer. No, I actually came here, would you believe, chasing ancient symbols. Um, and I moved here from oh, Philly. Wow. Oh, um, nice, nice. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, er everybody always asks, oh, did you marry an Irishman? No, I did <laughs> not. I came over here all by my lonesome and set up shop when I graduated um, from chiropractic school. And then to become... Chiropractic um, and allopathic medicine are so interesting because not everyone can get into medical school, but most people can get out. Mm. Everyone can get into chiropractic school, but not everybody gets out. Oh, wow. Um, interesting. So it's a, so we sit a, a very intense series of national boards, um, state boards, and it just goes on and on. And so while I was sitting all on my boards and doing all that, the guy that I was dating at the time, who was also in chiropractic school with me, he was from Philly. So that's how I ended up moving up to Philly. And oh, I, okay. I was the, uh, the green thumb chiropractor. I landscaped in Philly for an entire year, uh, which was such a, oh man, it was such a howl. I love the place. Were and, you in the uh, uh, city or were you in the suburbs? Uh, in the suburbs. Okay. Yeah, the which suburbs. county? Willits Avenue is where I live. Willits Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> was that Chester and, County? Uh, the that was uh what was it? Chester County. Chester. Yep. Yeah, right next door. I was in Delaware County, so right okay. next door. All right. Yeah. So um yeah, so it was one of those things where um I ended up there, and he was so great. He was th the love that I had there with him was one of those classic examples of what love can be like. We we were just crazy about each other. We were doing the same thing, but he also knew that I had a calling mm. and I had a calling to go to Ireland and that was not his calling. His calling was to stay in Philadelphia. And with so much love and so much support, um, he set me free. And wow. it was just, it was really an amazing example of how when two people are on path, on target, and they're following their hearts and their calling, um, it's wonderful to be in love. You know, he's since married and, um, you know, I went on and I have two children that were born here in Ireland and, you know, we're the best of friends and all, but it was one of those things where we just knew in that moment that I need to go here and he needs to go here. Mm -hmm. um, so Philly holds a very, very special place in my heart because of that, because it really was the first place that I embraced the concept that, you know, this craziness that when two people come to an end of their story, whether it's five minutes, you know, 15 minutes or 50 years, that there has to be some kind of drama in order to exit that we can't, you know, peacefully come to a space where we go, you know, our, our, our storyline is, is done together. This is our stop. I'll get off here and you get off here. And, you know, we wave at each other with love and move on our way. Um, and it was really, that's what that place means to me. That's the that's the message and the lesson of life that was ingrained in me from Philadelphia. So I hold a very, very, you know, dear vibration when I think of that space. Oh, well, I love that. Yeah. And I love that. That's how we get to start the, the episode here. Uh, you are someone who is very unique. You've had some very unique experiences starting before you were even born, right? When you were in your mother's womb. Do you yeah. want to tell the audience a little bit about <laughs> what that was? You know, some people have womb trauma and I had like the, the whole, uh, the wow womb experience, which was <laughs> um, my mother, when she was pregnant with me, found out in the first trimester she had German measles. And so back in the mm. day, I was born in 69, but she would have been pregnant during all through 68. And back then, that was not a good, uh, a good news thing to get from the doctor because it wasn't going to work out well. End of story. So, um, my father was a Southern, um, he's a Christian minister, Southern Baptist. Um, so they weren't like Holy Roller Bible Belt. Um, my dad was actually a, a big football player, football coach. Um, he used sports in the pulpit. It was, he, it was a very unique experiences and uh, experience and his congregations were always full because they loved his, his sermons because they were always about sports. And, um, he was just this, this really kind of cool, amazing room. He commanded a room when he walked into it and, mm -hmm. uh, but he was very devout, um, in his, in his spirituality and a very devoted Christian. Although one thing I'd have to say about him is he never 
pretended that he had all the answers. He just trusted. Um, Christianity was the, the box with wit, you know, or the lens that he chose to view life through and pass on his gifts and have his experiences. But he, he never forced it on anybody. It, he just planted those seeds. And so for me, it was interesting because when my parents got this news about me, um, when mom was pregnant, my father went home and, you know, what do ministers do? They pray. And so at one stage, um, he had what he called a celestial visit. Now, this was so fascinating because within Christianity, you would think that that visit would be heralded as an angelic visit. And he right. could not call it that because the imagery that Christianity uses to paint an angel was not what my father saw. These were right. humanoid beings. They, it sounds like they were his guides um, or maybe mine. Um, who appeared to him and they came and said, uh, not only is your baby girl going to be okay, but she's going to come in with some unusual abilities. And so remember, this is 1968, he's being told this, there are no um, ultrasounds. So there's no way he would have known um, and that I was going to be a girl or they would have known. And so sure enough, I was born, no complications. They couldn't believe it. And um so you can imagine what it was like for my parents getting that visit and getting that information that I was going to be a little different. And mm -hmm. they're like waiting. It's like walking around waiting for the shoe to drop. Right. And I was a really bubbly kid. And um, my very best friend as a child was my grandfather, who was my mother's dad, um, Dr. Garland Clark. And uh, Judge is what we called him. That was his nickname. And he was my everything. And we spent a lot of time together. And, um, he would tell me stories and being a surgeon, he was also a very interesting character because when judge was 15, he started to develop these very interesting abilities. Um, he had, uh, energy, heat, healing would pass through his hands at the age of 15 and, uh, hello, Mimi. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I presume that's Mimi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Mimi. She can't hear you yet though. Oh, Okay. Hi, Mimi. Hi. Hi. You on here? Yes, you are. Sorry, I tried to get here as quick as I could. Well, we're delighted <laughs> you're here. Come but when the board. grandbaby calls, the grandbaby wins. <laughs> Understood. As And I'm talking about my grandfather. Uh, yeah. So um, when my grandfather was 15 and he started getting these kind of strange things that were happening. He was in Winchester, Kentucky, and he heard about a man who was speaking over in Lexington, Kentucky. And so he went over to see if he could find out some things about what was actually happening to him because this man was meant to be um, quite unusual. And that man ended up being Edgar Casey. And oh, so, wow. Wow. yeah. So judge then grows up. He ends up going off and becoming a doctor, then a surgeon. And later then ended up uh, consulting with Casey. And so, oh, wow. you know, so which is kind of fun because that was his, it was his birthday two days ago, Edgar Casey. And um, Judge died when he was 66 and Casey died when he was 66. And I told both of them, forget about it. I'm not wearing myself out the way that you guys did. I will contribute <laughs> in a completely different way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, Judge was this really interesting character and um, he was such a part of my childhood. But when I was about four, my dad calls me into what I always call the kitchen table talk. And, you know, I told you he was a minister and a football player and he was a huge, big man, big muscles, weightlifter, the whole nine yards and had this booming voice. And, and he sat me down. He said, sugar, do you know the difference between alive and dead? <laughs> and I'm like four. <laughs> so crickets, you know, and uh, I'm like, I, I guess so. Do you know? And so this is when my parents proceeded to tell me that judge was dead since I was one. Wow. So all of the stories I would come back that they could validate because they knew him well. Um, and all the things that I would talk about, about judge, um, were the same way kind of that I'm communicating with you guys right now. Like I know that you're sitting there and you're real, right. even though. 
I can't touch you right now. And I can't, I can't feel that the meat wagon, you know, I can't see, feel the, the, the flesh and bones, but I know you're there and we're able to communicate in real time. So well. when you try to explain to a four-year-old who's been interacting with, you know, this holographic imagery of, of somebody that this isn't reality, that it doesn't float because that was very real for me. And, and, it, and the interactions, the information was real. Um, the things he would tell me actually had happened. The things he would show me were things that we saw together. And so thus began my parents' um, wild ride um, because now the things that those beings had said to my father were starting to manifest. Well, so that's shoe, incredibly interesting. That shoe done dropped at age four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me ask you a little bit about, was his appearance holographic, you said? It wasn't uh, the same as everyone else? Well, I guess because to me, like, like I could see him sitting on the end of my bed. Right. I can remember and feel touching his hand today because I still I communicate with him on a daily basis. Um, okay. Today, he is more virtual in appearance than physical. Um, okay. Now, that's not to say that he hasn't appeared physically on numerous occasions, um, but it's still slightly different. It's not it's not like me. Is it like but transparent? It's not like what I'm seeing with you. So maybe like digital. When we went from digital to analog, is that when uh, or analog to Excellent digital? Excellent example, and I am using that from this day forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great analogy. Yes, um, you know they're both doing the same thing, but that vibration has sped up. So the need for his physical appearance when I was four was probably far more necessary than right. it is for me at 53. Okay. That's greatly interesting. Uh, I mean, I don't, I've never seen anything. I, I think that would kind of freak me out. I've <laughs> have spiritual gifts that were unlocked to me. I can communicate with pretty much any energy that exists around me, you know, whether it's plants, animals, trees, mm -hmm. clouds, it's all consciousness. I can hear them. All I have to do is tune into it. But I haven't physically seen anything. And I think they that whatever is out there, it would know that it would kind of freak me out. So they don't want to present themselves that way to me. Uh, so uh, it, it's very, very interesting. I don't know how I would react if I saw something, uh, you know, at a young age like you did. And you just assume that it was just the same as everybody else. So uh, as uh, someone who comes from a Christian background, I'm sure you're familiar with the term, the familiar spirits. Could it be that this is a familiar spirit, that it's a, a false image that is presenting itself as something you would know so that you would trust it? Uh, I get asked this question all the time. And it's, uh, if they've spent my entire lifetime presenting mm -hmm. um, this front of love, openness, compassion, um, healing, um, acceptance, um, just this projection of all things wonderful, then wow, they really wasted their time on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At some stage you'd think, you know, like, are they waiting for my deathbed to, to make a demonic appearance? No. Cause I get asked that a lot. I've actually, I actually lost a very, very dear friend um, for that exact same reason mm. who had gone into, uh, went down a rabbit hole and, you know, as humans do can borderline on that strange little bit of psychosis and then overthink things to the point where, um, well, hang on a second. If I can't do this, then what, what's right. happening to you must be bad. Right. Uh, because I can't give it a name. It doesn't have a flavor. I can't do this. So it must be wrong. Right. And we see that a lot. And, you know, particularly in the South, that would be, you know, those bad things that you might have heard of before that you found out weren't really true. Well, they're, you know, they didn't, they didn't come out of nowhere um, because there was a lot. The South has gone through a, a massive transformation. Like I find it a great joy going home. Now it's very, very different than it was even when I was a child. Mm. Um, you know, there was racism was still abundant. I was on the buses that were bussed across town when we first started desegregation, like, that stuff is real. I remember it well. It was, um, we've, we've transformed, thank God. And people are beginning to see Southerners in the South for, for the people they really are. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I, I think that, the, well, you know, being where we are, it, it's incredibly 
uh, actually, like all of the positions of authority and all are of black or uh, men or women. You know, it's not really white people aren't the, the teachers, the police. That, that's not the case for the most part. So when I moved down here, I had this perception that it was going to be because my whole life I was told the South. And it's the same type of thing we're right. talking about here with uh, Christianity saying that, oh, it has to be demonic. You know, people are just telling you things that they heard somewhere else and they're just repeating it. It's an indoctrination type of thing without experience. It's fear based. It's not an understanding. Totally. And, and, and with these uh, encounters, celestial beings, angels, when you actually find a depiction of an angel that's actually written about in the Bible, they're very different than what we assume totally. they look like. <laughs> and totally. and there are good angels and there are bad angels. So are not necessarily bad angels, but there's fallen angels. There's there are demons there. So people, when you're operating from a place of fear, then everything is how can this hurt me? How can I be in trouble with this thing here rather than, OK, let me see the wonderment and the joy that may come from all of this. Well, And it's also proof positive about the power of, you know, the reality that we are frequency and light. And so. Right. You know, it's like we've just gone through the, the strangest last couple of years. And they were right. like, you know, everybody's going to die from COVID. Well, everybody didn't die from COVID. And why is that? Because everybody's course, their life path, their purpose, their 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 time here wasn't meant to be devoted to that. Some people used it as an exit. And some people did die from COVID. And so it's kind of like, you know, smoking kills, dot, 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 some people. And then there's that birthday card where the 100-year-old 100, 100 granny is lighting her cigarette off that candle on that birthday cake. And she's been smoking all her life. Right. If smoking killed everybody who ever smoked would die. If everyone who drank a beer um, was to become an alcoholic, then everyone who's ever drank alcohol would be alcoholic. It's just, we're so good at like tarring everything uh, with the same brush and it just yeah, with absolutes. Yeah. It's all mm -hmm. the, about the absolutes. And so, you know, it's like when people talk about, entities and attachments and you know evil things and all that well how come it doesn't affect everybody um well because there are some people who aren't here to do that it's like you could have somebody who goes to harvard and one is going to study economics and another is going to study law now they're in the same school but their agendas their syllabi their teachers professors their homework everything is different but they're still mm -hmm. both harvard graduates Right. And so it's, you know, we, we get this idea that we're all meant to have the same experience, which is why we've been in chaos for the last little while, because we tried to shove everybody into the same thing. Well, you know what? I personally, I've, I've been looking after myself all of my life, you, you know, my adult life anyway, you know, I, I, I eat well, I, I exercise, I do my thing and, you know, am I prude about it? No, I do it when I can, but I also have a really, really good positive attitude pretty much all of the time, you know, so I had COVID a couple of times and, you know, then I have people that are patients of mine who got it and then died. And then I got people who had no reaction to it whatsoever and then died from the, the vaccination. And then I had people who got the vaccination, didn't have any reaction. And then I had, I and mean, it goes on and on right. and on and on. And the world tried to make each and every one of us have the exact same experience. Right. Well, what just happened to us over the last couple of years marked a transitory time where we moved from 3D blew right past 4D and into 5D and discovered the element of choice in our earthly experience. And, you know, there are some people who were leaving jobs that they hated. There were some people that were finally getting to be at home together long enough to be in each other's company and space and have that baby they could never have. <laughs> then there were some people who were sick as dogs and took that time to reevaluate, man, I really need to kind of to take stock of what shape my body was in when this hit me, because right. those were the people who truly suffered. You know, it wasn't, you don't get a side of storm when you're, when you're already in good shape, you know, the inflammatory process really hit the people who were already inflamed. Right. And so if you step back and stop trying to make everybody have the same experience and how on earth could we expect everybody to react to a single drug the same way, mm -hmm. you know, of course, yeah. there was going to be fallout and casualty, but we human beings are funny like that. We want everybody to do the same thing and feel the same way and have the same experiences. 
And that's just not what we came here for. Right. Because we feel that if I'm doing things this way, I'm, I think I'm doing things correctly. And since you're not uh, matching up with me, then you must be wrong because right. if you're not wrong, then I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, then my whole worldview is completely thrown out. But, but we're all Sounds like every organized religion ever made. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and we're all the cells of God. You know, we ha all have a billion cells, trillions of cells in us. Well, we're all the cells of God. We're the body of Christ. The liver doesn't function the same way as the kidney or the heart or the left pinky. You know, there's so many different things going on that we have to be vastly different. And I find the beauty in the differences of everybody because I can look at the overlap and I can see that the terms that this group uses and the terms that this group uses, oh, they're saying the same thing. They're just fighting over the terms, the, the English words or, or whatever that the human made language, that's what they're arguing over and they're spending their time arguing instead of looking at the beauty of everything. So, you know, I, I was saved by Jesus after becoming very psychic all of a sudden and exploring the astral realms. And he pulled me away from a, a bunch of demonic evil things. And because I learned him through the energetic nature, through psychedelics, through meditation, him coming to me in the clouds, uh, because I talk about him in a different way, Christians attack me. I don't get attacked by anybody uh, but Christians. And it's the strangest thing that I'm not talking about the right Jesus. That, And, you know, it's, it's just so much to it. But I look at things and I'm like, no, I know the energetic things exist. Like I experience them on a regular basis. Like, and so... When someone tells me like, no, we're just physical beings, like that's that's the furthest from the truth. And you have a great experience uh, from your NDA. Not that it was a great thing that happened to you, or maybe it was uh, this NDE that you had in Charleston, South Carolina at the age of 21. Do you want to get into that a little bit? Yeah. So um, I was on my way to a Christmas party. I worked in a sign company and it was December 14th, 1991, and it was hot in Charleston and I was wearing a t-shirt and shorts and a little jingle bell around my neck. And I was in my little Toyota Corolla um, <laughs> and pulled up to highway 17, which is a major highway, uh, which you guys would know down your way. Yes, um, we do know it very well. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Right, up, right here, <laughs> it's right up the road, yep. the, the, the crossroads of my life, metaphorically <laughs> and metaphysically. Yeah, um, yeah. She started out in Philly before she moved to Ireland. Mimi. Of course she did. <laughs> <laughs> of course I did. And, um, yeah, so I got to the stoplight um, coming from a side road. Uh, I was 30 seconds away from my apartment and um, my light was red. So I sat there for a little while and then my light turned green and I started moving across the lanes of traffic. And when I got to the last lane of the traffic that would have been coming towards me in order to go towards town, I looked and I saw a car barreling towards me. And it was really interesting because mm. everything changed in that moment because I was like, oh, okay, this is it. I'm getting ready to die. And I had this sudden awareness at that time. I'd done this so many times before. This was, you know, nothing freaky, nothing scary. I wasn't panicked. It was so easy. So it was like time slowed like a down. Time loop, oh, it sounds stopped. like. It was, okay. it, would, it just stopped. Mm. And so I had the chance to go, all right, kiddo, how do you want to do this? You want to be in the body and experience this. And I was, and I recall, you know, thinking about, was there anything left for me to benefit from that? Was there anything I could put in my little basket before I went home um, that would be of service to me that I didn't already have? And I, and I went, no, because I was like, I've done this so many times. Um, and that's, that's going to hurt because this guy's going fast. And so they estimated that he blew through the light and 81 year old gentleman, uh, at 75 miles an hour. And so wow. when I made the decision to go out of the body, there was a sound. And this was where my, my, my interest in frequency began because it was like a low drone, like a bagpipe drone in the background. And I believe, um, you know, with, with the understanding of harmonics and physics, that this is what tethers us to the body. Um, and so it's that lower vibration and there's, it's interesting to stay here too, because, it, um, I would love to see, do you know, you know, JP Sears, do you know that comedian? 
who does yeah. all the spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would love to see him do something about um, how we talk about things that are low vibe and high vibe <laughs> because it has been just robbed by the, by the spiritual community because it, it's like, again, it's that thing we were talking about before where it's got to be good or it's got to be bad or this or the black or white, blah, blah, blah. And low vibration doesn't mean lesser than or less evolved. Low vibration is something, you know, that's quite necessary. So let's say if a higher, um, a high vibration being is coming into the denser earth plane, it requires a lower denser vibration in order to keep that being in the body Mm -hmm. to have the experience. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's an excellent thing. But immediately we're like, Oh, we're, we're so low vibe or she's so low vibe and I'm so high vibe. And this thing that we do, it continues on that dichotomy, that separation that we, the illusion um, that we're not fractals of the same whole. That's, that's, you know, kind of how we buzz here. But, um, there was a low vibration and I went, Oh my gosh, that's the sound that keeps my molecules inside of that body. Wow. Wow. And it was like this, Oh oh yeah. And as I came up out of the body and came hovering over, what was so fascinating about this was I didn't like die and wake up somewhere else. I got to witness my own death. So Mm -hmm. I was actually out of my body, the me, the essence of who I really am and got to watch that car slam into my car. And so he plowed into the driver's side door, bent the car in half. It was like a T-bone and um, my head went through the window. It's funny. Whenever I do these podcasts, I'm sitting here looking. If you see me move my head, it's because I just I'm getting so tickled because I'm crooked always. (laughs) Mm. I have this quirky, weird head tilt from breaking my neck. Um, And it's really pronounced when I see myself on screen, but my head went through the driver's side window and my neck broke. And, um, so the car went spinning around in the intersection. Of course, now all the traffic is halting and I'm just watching this. And I was like, this is so interesting. And what was really cool was I didn't realize at the time that a couple of cars behind me was a girl that had been my sweet mate in college. And now I didn't go to college in Charleston, um, but she was from Charleston. And I mean, it was a big city at that time. It was probably about 350,000 people. And she just happened to be two cars behind me. And so the relevance of that experience was that Mm. out of the body, I got to watch her realize that it was me and the car. And I could feel everything she was feeling. And that was how I experienced the accident because I had no sense of trying to clamor back or, Oh my God, I'm too young to go. You know, it was nothing like that. I was watching with this kind of detached interest, very grateful for having had the body and the experience. And I was like, okay, next. And I got to experience the horror of the death, but only via her feelings, via an empathic type of relationship with it. Because, um, I always use this example because it's the best one I have figured out so far. I told you before that when I was doing all my exams to become a doctor at the end that I was landscaping in Philly and it's hot in Philly in the summer, y'all. And, Humid. Yeah. Oh, man. so much. And so I'd be pushing this big lawnmower around with my boyfriend and the things you do for love um, <laughs> in these apartment complexes. And I remember at the end of the day, I was the fittest I've ever been in my life then, by the way. Um, but I was so hot and I'd come in and I'd peel the clothes off and imagine peeling off those dirty clothes and throwing them down next to the washing machine and then going and getting in the best shower ever. And you're washing off all the muck and the grime and you're free and it's cold and it feels lovely. The last thing you're thinking about is your clothes that are sitting next to the washing machine. And so when I am observing my own death, that Mm. was how I felt about the body. It was like, the vehicle that had just carried me around was sitting inside of a vehicle that had just gotten smashed by somebody else. And so I really had no attachment to that other than, Hey, thanks for the lift. That was awesome. Um, what's next? Where are we going? And so it was, it was at that point that the vibration changed again and I left that space and went to the next. Okay. So, when you said that you've done this again, were you referring to, well, maybe you don't even realize it, uh, 
was it that car accident, that exact situation, or just the coming out of your body, like the dying coming out part? Of body? Okay. Yeah. yeah I, uh, when I'll use, I didn't have an NDE, but when I smoked DMT for the, the, the first time that it blasted me off, I heard a vibrational buzzing in my ear, sounded like a rocket ship blasting off, which is a common thing. And then as soon as I was wherever you go, it was, oh, I'm back. Um, mm-hmm. here again, and then you hear things talking to you, and they're like, "Oh, hey, you're back." It's like, "Oh, okay, I, I remember." But then you come back into the body, and it's it's not the same. But it is this uh, frequency, and what's uh, something that's been coming to me lately? It's just so funny how I pick up thoughts just randomly come to me, and uh, I say that is Jesus talking to me when I just have these random things uh of you know one thought leads to another leads to another and it's like he's been showing me like oh you should make a meme with uh the beastie boys their song intergalactic planetary when they're saying another dimension the way that they're making that sound it's through instruments it's not someone actually talking and Mm -hmm. he's like yeah put uh when you smoke dmt this is what it feels like it feels like those vibrations very metallic or just different things you feel Mm -hmm. And it's like this, yeah, that sound, that's what it feels like because we are vibration. We are energy that is moving about. It's greatly interesting that you picked up on your friend's emotion. So were you uh, concerned at all for her or how was it? Um, nope. And so that it was just observing. <laughs> of the last thing you're thinking about is like, you know, when people, when people lose a loved one, and they're like, oh my gosh, I hope they're okay because I know they miss us so badly. Or not. Sorry to break it to you folks, but you're the last thing they're thinking about. And that's mm. not because you didn't matter. It's because they now understand. You step into this all-knowing space. Right. It's like the concept, you know, you, you're familiar with, with um, parables and, and imagery from the Bible. You know, when you're talking about... Um, counting the hairs on each individual's head until you get into this space. It's like God is everywhere at once. And that blows people's minds. They can't, they can't understand how that is. You leave your body and you return into that space. You understand that you're simply a fractal of that same God source. Right. And it's, that is it. We try. Every, lots of people have tried. We try to explain it to people. Um, but it is a very personal experience. And this is why when some people go through a transformation, whether it's a religious transformation or a, a you know, spiritual, or emotional transformation, and then they're like, oh, this is what you were talking about. Yes, that's what we were talking about. You know, you can't have that experience for somebody else. It's like when right. you, you, you know, when you try and force something down somebody's throat and convert them to your way of thinking and all that, it, it's meaningless because it's something that they have to con- come to themselves, you know, right. so it's, everyone has to have their own revelations. Absolutely. You know, and so, you know, you, t- you talk, you talk a lot about Jesus and about Christ, you know, that well, that Christ consciousness is a vibration and Christ consciousness is something that, you know, we've given a name to, but it's that same vibration that is available to everybody. That's the concept where, um, some hardcore folks, some Bible thumpers who get in there and go, you know, if you don't get this, that's you screwed. You're, you're damned to eternal damnation. It doesn't work like that. You know, Mm -hmm. that is somebody who's got, again, that separatist and dichotomy and black and white making God, God, good, hell bad. You don't understand this. That's like telling a child that if you don't get this algebra equation, the rest of your life is meaningless. You no longer matter. You're going to mm. disappear. You're going to be banished to the bad place because you don't understand this yet, which is why we have the opportunity to come here, to grow here, to have different experiences here and to evolve here. And why at some stage in our evolution, we get to see ourselves in others and go, oh my gosh, you were me all along. All right. Okay, so it sounds like you became your higher self, like you, because our higher self is kind of with us always, I feel it's like just over top of us watching. And you had the option of sitting in the car or becoming the higher self, you became the higher self. And you had this uh, phenomenal experience of observing. So in all of your 
uh, spiritual gifts and including your NDE and all the work you do now, which I want to get into in a moment. Have you ever come in contact with any demons or anything evil or has it always been just things that were helpful? Or, or oh, no, I'm sorry, maybe I shouldn't say helpful because demons can be helpful, but uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, things uh, yeah. that were just uh, perfect, or, or I'll say yeah, benevolent. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, we we have different playgrounds that we play on, and depending on where you are in your life, and I, I like to use the example of the patchwork quilt, and, you know, it's got multiple squares, and, um, you know, so I can be on my square, and somebody else could be on their square over there. There's not one square that's more important than the other square. It's, um, uh, you know, Emanuel Swedenborg um, if you break it down into kind of modern day, you are what you love and what you love is what you give your attention to. Um, he, that is an incredible concept, which means that what has your love and focus and attention is where you're going to vibrate. And so mm -hmm. if I'm vibrating in this space and you're in a different space where your love, focus and attention is going on something else, um, then we might not be able to see each other's experiences or have each other's experiences. But when we're in that same space, then we gel and we, 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 can connect in that way. It doesn't make one more valid than the other. Um, and what's really interesting is that now in the world that we live in, where everything is so quick in the digital, um, in the digital world, and it also allows us at rapid time, everything is sped up. We can jump straight into judgment without, um, you know, without uh, even the blink of an eye, we'll see something, we'll read something, we won't research it, we won't do this. And all of a sudden we're now vibing right. in that space. And we've just, you know, hung, drawn and quartered whoever was on the receiving end of that meme or that little, that little blip from Twitter. And it's really interesting. So, you know, is Twitter, is Twitter bad? Sometimes. Is Twitter good? Sometimes. You know, have I seen entities that have attached to people who were abusive with recreational drugs? Um, and come into their lives and create such chaos that the person had to actually take stock and create change. Yes. Yeah, so good entity or bad entity? Well, depends on who you're asking, do you know? Right. So I would be very much of the elk that there are everything, everything is here is a tool and available to us. And that includes the dark stuff, um, you know, because you can't weave a tapestry with all light, you know, there's got to be the dark and the light to create, um, create any kind of tapestry. Um, that has a story to tell. Um, we just like things, you know, we, we've gotten lazy and we like everything to feel good. Right. And, you know, those who are behind mass media and marketing um, have done an excellent job at getting us to want things on the spot. We don't want to work for things. You know, we want our food instantly. I have a headache. I take a tablet. I don't, we've cut out this sense of responsibility, which has furthered the chasm between good and bad. And right. so we've really got generations of people now who don't actually understand the value of an experience that's uncomfortable. And right. they'll immediately slap a name on it. That's bad. That's evil. That's this. And they're really missing out on the idea that there isn't anything that can cross your path that you can't use as an opportunity for growth and evolution. Nothing. Right. And, and I think that we're in a time and space where we have enough information to prove our point, no matter what our point is. It could be, you know, we could take one event and we could have six different angles from that event. And we have enough evidence to prove our point that this is the way, this is it. You know, things that are true for me aren't true for everybody. Things that are true for you aren't true for everybody. I think there is some kind of objective truth somewhere in the middle of everything when you take everyone's experience uh, combined and you try to add that together i think there is an objective truth but i think that so many times we think that our truth is objective but that's based upon the ego and the body and and that's being true. separate yeah and divided because we live in this world of just division everywhere that it's so hard to grasp that you could be saying and doing all the things that you're doing and in touch with all these benevolent things and someone else is doing and saying the same things and they're just in touch with things that are malevolent. You know, it, it could work out that way. So it's a very, uh, things vary from person to person. Like you said, whether you get something injected into your body or you take a medicine, 
or you smoke a cigarette or you drink some alcohol, it's never going to affect the same uh, two different people the same way. It's just not going to. And that's the beauty of Mm -hmm. what we are being different. And it's interesting that the mystics you brought up, Edgar Casey and Emanuel mm-hmm. Swedenberg were both Christians. Uh, mm-hmm. That's it's a strange thing on how I'm sure they were treated very poorly by Christians as well. I know that they were from different accounts uh, by certain sections of Christians treated them poorly, that they were demonic and they were doing evil things. So I, now I want to transition into the light work that you, the light work, the sound vibration frequency work that you do. Uh, can you give us a little insight on what that may look like on any given individual? Oh, sure. Um, so I would have, um, first of all, the the great blessing that came into my life um, years ago was a guy called Greg Papagna, and he is um, he's a frequency guru. This guy, um, and his his work is signs s i n e s music.com. And I could go, okay, Greg, I've had three of this exact same glioblastoma, um, brain tumor in, and they, all three of them sounded exactly like this. Can you match that pitch for me? Boom. Yep. And I'd be like, um, this person came in and they were literally stopping at my door before going to commit suicide. And here's what it sounded like. This is what that person who just had come from getting their vaccination sounded like. Can you pitch that tone for me? And so what we were able to do is, you know, I'm 30 years doing this. Um, and so I've been, I've had, and also the beauty of, of, of also being a doctor is that I've got my hands on people all day long, every single day. So I've been given this beautiful petri dish of of human beings to work with who are coming from all walks of life with these different experiences but then i'm going there's there's certain pitches to certain emotions there's a certain pitch to a certain illness and we've started honing this down because what we're trying to move away from is gurusalem you know we don't need another guru another guru we (laughs) want people to become their own gurus we want people to fix themselves that we want to empower people and so guess what we're all frequency and light and frequency and light is available to all of us. Just a lot of people didn't know how to access those tools. So I have spent my, my entire career trying to find ways to make this easier for people because luckily I learned very, very early on um, in my twenties. Yeah. I had this freaky energy coming through me after I came back from the dead and um, I was able to affect change in somebody's body. They had cancer. I could get rid of it. Well, guess what? maturity, thank God, and the release of, of ego attachment to being a healer, um, allowed me to know, well, yeah, you can go in and remove anything from somebody's experience, but if they haven't gleaned the lesson from the experience, it's coming back. So right. don't do that to them. You're not doing them any favors. It makes you look great, but what about them? Do you know? Right. And so I, I, I learned this early, early in the game and became a window washer. So all I do is I use these gifts to wipe that window clean so people can see out for themselves and find their own way home again. So, you know, we work daily trying to hone these frequencies into a a very usable toolkit for people. Um, And, you know, I, I, it changes all the time. I I still work one-on-one with people and they come in and I can see um, past or concurrent life experiences and, you know, this life experience where they've left a piece of themselves stuck in some trauma and can use and manipulate frequency and energy in a positive way to bring them back into present time so they can help themselves to heal. Um, yay, sounds great. And people are like, well, that's good for you. You can do it and you can see the dead people, but I can't do that. Yes, you can. I just do it every single day. So I got really, really good at it. And so, you know, it's like if somebody sits and plays guitar all day long, every day, they're going to be good at it. I don't do that. I'm not good at the guitar, but boy, I'm good at manipulating energy. (laughs) And so I'm trying to continuously work throughout my life to bring this into a tangible, accessible way for anybody to be able to use it. And all they have to bring to the table is a little bit of discipline. And guess what, my friends, that's what we lack. Because right. there are so many people that you you would think, well, everybody wants to heal. No, they don't. Because people use illnesses, people use emotional states to manipulate the world around them um, in in 
uncomfortable and negative ways just as much as they do in a healing and positive way. And you don't get to decide that for somebody, you know, they, I've had so many people, I can't shake a stick at it that, that have come in with cancer who, you know, they're like, mm, but I'm getting attention from my spouse for the first time in our marriage since mm. this happened. And mm, do it's I like really want crutch. that to go? It's an excellent crutch. And so it's really interesting what you encounter with people. Um, people who, who hang on to trauma or abuse stories because it gets them somewhere or it's a great excuse not to engage or get close to people. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it just, the, the, the list is endless of how people use their experiences. And so for us to come in and try and, you know, go, you're healed to every single person who crosses our path, it doesn't work that way. If they're not in that space, you know, if we're not able to match vibration with something, it's like spiritual homeopathy. You go in with something um, that resonates at the same frequency. And if that individual's in a space where they are ready and have done the work that they deem necessary in their lives, since their soul is the one that chose it in the first place, um, if they're at that space, then they can let it go. Absolutely. And then some people work on that till the day they die and maybe don't get it. Um, and then recycle themselves into a space where they come back in a different set of circumstances, um, with different players in the game and they go for it again. Hmm. Very interesting. So you do you hear these things? You you said when you were working uh, with the that guy that you were telling him what it sounds like. So do you hear the vibration of these I illnesses? I hear it. I, yeah, I hear it. I see it. I smell wow. it. Um, the smell bit is very interesting because um, particularly when I'm working with if you're if you're talking about entities or any kind of it, vibrationally demonic um uh, energies that are around, they have this really fun smell, not. Um, and so for whatever reason, that's how they come through with me. Um, other things would come through as a movie in my head. It's like, I'm watching, uh, you know, if I close my eyes right now and I visualize an ice cream cone, I can see an ice cream cone in my mind's eye. Um, and I will see something, let's say, that happened in somebody's past. And and I'll, all I'll do is just connect in, you know, I'll throw a hook into the timeline and I'll immediately go back to, uh, you know, that sexual abuse when they were 12 or that drug overdose when they were 18 or whatever it was that disempowered them and continues to leech forward um, and take energy away from their present time experience. Um so it comes in all sorts of different ways. That's, you know, and that keeps it really fun and exciting too. I imagine it like when you're explaining to a car mechanic the sound that your car is making <laughs> and you're trying to figure out the problem. Like that's what I'm commercial. picturing, like you giving him all these noises and like, okay, what is this? <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Oh, I, I, I just got this drop in of information uh, <laughs> that's very interesting. What I'm saying is, so when you say somebody, uh, you're seeing their past life or a concurrent life, uh, uh, what I'm picking up on is that there's a spirit that moves about from uh, generation to generation. There's uh, We all share the same spirit, the DNA strands, essentially, that share the same spirit. And then it's like something new just gets dropped in, like a little, I'm saying it like almost... A speck. Yeah, a little speck is like getting dropped in right in the center of that spirit and the spirit goes back in, but it's with... So it's bringing the experience of the past spirit, but it's with a new leader, essentially, right in the mm -hmm. center of the brain. So that's I'm kind of seeing that that's the soul being placed inside the spirit and it carries on from generation. To, it's like a vehicle within a vehicle. The spirit exactly. is within the physical body. I just had I just had some guests over from America last week and one of them is a she's 25 and she was telling me about this new thing that she does. Um and she's like, oh my God, you'd love it. Um, you rent clothes and I pay a monthly prescription and like this big box of clothes arrives every month. And I was like, what? And she goes, yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. So I have all these new different outfits. And then I'm like, and then what happens? And she goes, and I box them up and I send them off and my next box arrives. And I was like, wow. So it was such an interesting um thing to think so she's wearing the same clothes that somebody else on the other side of the country could have been wearing and they could have been at you know this concert or this one this jumper was being worn at the birth of a child or this one 
that dress was worn to a funeral and th those clothes were having all these different experiences and it was so interesting. No. And then her, her body was stepping into those clothes and I just was like, Ooh, I'm going to use that one day. Thank you. I'm using it now. <laughs> um, and it is, it's, you know, it's like when you, somebody will go, Oh, well, I was, you know, in my past life, I was in Egypt and I was like, yeah, so are we all because we were all that past life. And it's like when somebody's like, oh, I was Cleopatra. So are we all. I was George Washington. So are we all. You were also that guy selling fish down on the corner who we can't remember his name. Right. Um, you know, and somebody had to clean the toilets in the pyramid. And guess what? It was you. <laughs> um, we've all been all things. So I, I, it's funny when people latch on to the more divine, you know, the really cool experiences. And they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm channeling my Egyptian, my Egyptian life. Yeah. Yeah. Because we all had it. We're all fractals of the same whole, meaning there's nothing that you sit in judgment of another human being for that you haven't done or will do. So mm. mind your P's and Q's about what comes out of your mouth, sunshine, because it's all of us. We're all of those things. And I think that's so fun. Do you okay. know? And yeah, at certain yeah. times we, em we embrace those things more than others. Uh, yeah, I love that. And with this concurrent life thing, I see that all the time, that every time you come to a fork in the road, a decision, you go either way, whatever the decision is. So in your opinion, uh, I don't know if you've ever even thought about this, but how do you think that we arrive at the place that we are? You know, why don't we go with a certain decision and why do we go with a certain one? Do, have you ever thought about that? Why the physical reality works the way that it does? That's the fun of this Monopoly game. Do you know? It's like you come in here and this place has a certain set of rules, right? Right. And I, I always love using that example because it's like, we come from that same space. Let's call it that God on the God cast. We're coming from the God space. Right. And so we come into this and people are like, why would we come into the pain and the suffering and all? Because when you make the decision to do it, you know, it's not real. And then the whole point is by following that rule book, you come in here and you forget that temporarily. It's never permanent. Right. But you forget that and you come in here. And so in this, it's like when we play Monopoly with our friends, you and I both know you're not a silver dog and I'm not a silver shoe. And you know that you can't buy Park Place or the water utilities factory for, for a $500, you know, pink dollar bill. But we pretend and we engage and we play with each other and we get competitive and we laugh and we get angry and, you know, we agree to play that game that way. And so life is very much the same way. Um, you come in, there's a certain set. It's like having an outline. But everything that happens in between, that's what free will actually is. It's that you can come in in your silver shoe and you can make certain decisions. I roll the dice and I land on Park Place and I have the option. Mm, no, nah, I don't think I have enough cash yet. I'm not going to buy that right now. That's how games work. Right. And so we come in here and we have that choice, that free will. Um, you know, we know we have a beginning, a middle and an end. That's set in stone how we navigate through that is what makes each individual life experience unique because okay. you're doing you, I'm doing me, Mimi's doing her and she looks like that and you look like that. And I look like this in this lifetime. Um, and we, you know, we are, I live in Ireland and you guys live there and I'm like, we're all having our own unique experiences yet. Here we are vibing in this hour and sharing pretty much that same vibration of conclusion that we've come to and we've never met before an hour ago. Right. That's, and so the yeah. same thing, you can come across another person who has had an experience that is completely different to yours. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. picture um, like Jumanji versus <laughs> totally. Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so do you think that the, because we were talking earlier about the, the marketing and the media, do you think that there's maybe some magicians, I'll use that word, that have broken the rules of the game to their own advantage and that they aren't breaking free will, but they're tricking people into using their free will against them? Or are they presenting people with a, a even higher, like they've raised the stakes, um, you know, a, a quicker, more accessible, um, easier to fall for to the temptation of, what they have to offer because there are teams that are global 
that are here to ensure that each and every one of we fractals of that God source whole come here and get what we paid for. Mm. So someone has to put that in to action. You know, there are many of us who work on these different teams for one another to make sure that we get what we came for. Because if you pray for compassion and patience, does compassion and patience come knock, knocking at your door or does tribulation come? Right. You have to earn right? it. And you earn it and you live it and you then embody it. It's again what we were talking about before when you tell somebody about the love of God and then somebody experiences it. Yeah. They're two different experiences. Yeah. Yeah. That that is so wonderful. That's a good example. <laughs> yeah. That uh, I think that we have really uh gone to a place, you know, physically where that's a, a great example. The stakes have been raised. It's like uh, at first, you know, way back when the first uh, thing happened, whatever incursion happened, where God, because God is allowing all of this, obviously, that it, at first we didn't learn the, the certain lesson and then it kept getting worse and worse and worse. I can attest to this in my own life. You know, I was a drug addict and bad decisions and I went to prison and, and so on and so forth, all the things that came with that. And it it took me a very long time to understand exactly what i was doing wrong you know there's a meme that says uh i don't do things wrong one time and then correct them just to make sure i do them wrong seven or eight times before <laughs> yeah. uh, just to make sure that it's the right thing you know exactly. uh it's the right uh, wrong thing <laughs> right and wrong. that's that's how i feel that the earth really has been shaped in the way that it is is that it took everybody being enslaved over and over again to realize that we're doing it to ourselves, that we can free, well, all we have to do is free our minds. And the rest will follow. And the rest will follow. <laughs> free your mind. And it's like, you know, as we 80s kids who grew up with the first, the, the oh man, the 80s, the experience of walking in with a bag full of quarters into an arcade mm. and actually playing Pac-Man standing up, you know, at, a, at, at a, in an arcade, amazing. But what happened there? You know, the first time you played it, you got gobbled up straight away. God, I just <laughs> lost a quarter in five seconds. And then all of a sudden, a few weeks into it, you started getting better at it. And then what happened? You moved to level two. And then what happened? The game started getting more difficult. Was that because you're more evil or you're so unevolved? No, it's because you're more evolved and you're ready for it. And so as everything speeds up and this world seems to get more, more hateful and it's so, but no, it's just going faster because we're ready we're ready um, for a different exp experience. We're ready for a different level of this. Right. And it's just presenting us with the, the opportunity to see it much faster than we used to. Right. Okay. So do you have any insight on what uh, maybe we could expect for the rest of 2022? Because I know it's just going to get crazier, but do you have it's any? It's going to get crazy. <laughs> but you know what? It's it, it's a good crazy. Like I, I laughed. I did... Um, uh, podcasts and stuff all through the pandemic. And I've been watching some of the videos that came up, um, you know, like from two years ago and things that I was talking about. And I was just laughing because it's all come to pass exactly <laughs> the same way that I was talking about it then, because it's like when somebody says, you know, where do you guys live now? You're Georgia. You're no, I know Georgia, but where? Oh, uh, near Savannah. Okay. Near Savannah. Okay. So do you remember when somebody's, you know, in your perception of what the, the South was going to be like when you got there? Mm -hmm. That didn't come from your personal experience. It came nope. from what other people had told you or what you'd seen in books or movies or, or whatever. You got that perception from outside of yourself. Right. So it's like that old adage, you know, well, hey, well, what's it like in Savannah? Well, what are you like? What do you mean? Well, you know, what do you like? Do you, do you like people? Yeah, I like people, but you know, there's a lot of buttheads out there and there's a lot of this and that. I expect this to look like this. And you're going to get exactly the experience. You guys moved to the Savannah that you were ready for. Right. And so Savannah has opened you with, you know, or welcomed you with open arms and presented you with this beautiful kind of um, amazing vibe where the people are nothing like you had thought they were going to be because you were ready to see that. Right. And if you had come in with the expectation that it was going to be horrible, A, I doubt you would have moved there in the first place. And B, you know, you would have gotten exactly what you paid for. You would have gotten your expectation of that. And so 
there was some part of you that knew that's what you were going into because I don't think you went there going, okay, we're going to go into the cesspool and be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> right. You were ready in your own lives and you were rocking at a vibration that was ready to allow you to see that. And it matched. That's how frequency works. And that's how right. the healing that I do works. You know, it's, it's, if somebody is in a space where they are resonating in fear and guilt and shame and grief and anger, guess what frequency I give them? The one for fear and grief and guilt and shame and anger. Right. Not yeah, it's like, one because, you know, they need to match that vibration right. in order to move on to that next level of Pac-Man. It's like Schrodinger's cat. That That's how I kind of view everything. I'm like, I don't want to observe it. I don't want to come to a conclusion. I want to wait and get there. I want to be patient and understand that what's happening to me in this moment is not final. That there is something else that's going to come up because of what i'm experiencing and especially when something you know that i don't like happens to me i'm like okay the other shoe will drop and there will be a reason for this i just have to be patient and get there and as i've done that i've realized that just pulling away the conclusion you know like assuming that my daughter did the wrong thing because you know i caught the brief end of this and then i confront her and she's like but i didn't do that and now i look like a jerk because now i'm assuming i'm projecting and it's based on pattern behaviors of what's happened to me in the past. So now I'm just assuming that that happened. And now it makes a whole new situation that I could have just avoided if I don't come to a conclusion. And I just ask her open-minded, hey, did you do this because of this? And then she tells me the answer. And I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't need to feel anger, frustration, sadness, grief, uh, all of those things that come with that. Uh, so... Uh, but you I can really... see how easy that's a rote response to something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what we do when we're trying to help people actually achieve a lasting healing, uh, you know, I, I love this. It's like here, here we are right now in present time. If we want to go back into the past for a bad or negative or hurtful or harmful or painful experience, it's going to happen via a neural pathway and a chemical reaction. If I want to move forward into, you know, we're like, what, what, what else does 2022 have to hold? Mine's going to be awesome. I can tell you that um, because I expect nothing less. And I put right. out a frequency of bring it on, whatever it is. I got it. And, you know, I'm, I'm here for it all. And that happens, that projection via a chemical reaction. So if somebody is fearful about the future, guess what? It's a chemical reaction down a neural pathway. The only thing that is real which is why, you know, that's how concurrent lifetimes work, because everything is happening right now. The right. only way we can go back here into pain or up here into into fear is through a chemical reaction and a neural pathway. I use frequency to help people change the chemical reaction and the neural pathway. So rather than just talking about it for seven years and filling in the potholes of somebody's trauma, go in with a stick of dynamite and blow it up so they can't go back there. All they can do is go back to the experience and glean the wisdom from that. But the trauma can no longer steal from them. Wow. That, that's beautiful. Uh, Mimi, do you have any final questions? I don't think I do. All right. <laughs> uh, so the way that I like to go out here is I like to ask my guests, what is your go-to grounding technique? You know, in this world that uh, we can just c pop out of our bodies at any minute and we never know when it's going to happen. How do you keep yourself grounded as a human in your purpose uh, in this particular lifetime? Okay. Well, again, we've talked all about frequency. For me, it, it is frequency. I, I do practice what I preach there. So if you go onto my website, which is maryhelenhensley.com, we've just been through a couple of years of everything COVID, everything COVID. People are sick of COVID, blah, blah, blah. But COVID has a frequency, and so does the gift that the entire experience brought to us it continues on to this day and it is by no means finished if you go onto my website the first thing that's going to pop up is a covid frequency where i went in and i pitched everything to do with covid and it's a 33 minute um uh download that you can listen to it's absolutely free um you know just pop on the earphones or listen to it on your phone or whatever but it becomes a daily discipline so whenever we want to change someone you know, people will be like, oh my gosh, I used that on my mom and she was on a ventilator and she got off. Yeah, because you went in, she had an intention, she had a life goal and the frequency was able to help her move into a space to remember that. Wow. You know, there's nothing that's going to go in and, and, and change the course of someone's destiny, but we can enhance their experience, you know. So if they're caught somewhere 
And if the body has become overwhelmed, if the, if the spirit or the emotional state has become, it's stuck in a state of overwhelm, you can go in with frequency or words or a kind deed and you can affect change that then pulls them back in and puts them back on the, on the right path again, do you know? And so um, that COVID frequency, I think for, if I were given a suggestion to other people to, to have a go-to, to go to for grounding, I use frequencies every day, all day. And so it is a part of my life. That's how I remain grounded. There's, there's a download that's on my website um, called Laramar Dreams. Now that's a full album and that comes with all the different frequencies and there's a um, listener's guide and all of that. But as far as something that people can start immediately using on a daily basis, go get that free COVID frequency and start using it. Start creating a positive change. Be that change that you want to see. You're sick of COVID? Go then become a, become part of the positive change that it has to offer. So use that frequency. It's beautiful. The music is lovely. And there are layers upon layers of different frequencies in that. And from everything from DNA repair to if, you know, if your body has physically had to deal with it or if you are emotionally fraught and distraught from mm. either the fear of it or the loss from it. Um, or, you know, every, anything that could have changed that affected your life in a way that you felt was, um, harmful to all the people who had a really positive experience from it. You know, they, they, they fell in love. They, they, they quit a job. They couldn't stand, you know, they, that, that's two years of my life. Yeah. So, you know, some people went through and finally cleaned out that garage. that has been sitting there for 10 years waiting for their attention. You know, some people went and cleaned their bodies up. They started to detox. They began to realize because one of the things that happened with COVID is that everybody who got it got visited by the by the ghosts of of um, of COVID past, which is it brought to the surface things that people experienced physically that the body hadn't yet dealt with, but it stuck in hibernation. Right. This is why people got these freaky rashes and these weird things that happened. Because the body is beautiful in its capacity to pack things away. That's why we have so many fat cells. Fat cells are like little storage units. Um, and so we can take things that we're not able to digest and deal with on the day and save them for later. Because guess what? Surprise, surprise. Everything is food. Not just what we put in our mouths. Everything we experience is food. Yeah, we and consume so when it you all. See some, exactly. And that's the purpose of fat in the human body. That it acts as a filter. It acts as a storage place. And so when you see people who have dealt with what's going on in their lives, they're usually in a state where they're resonating in a really good, healthy space. When you see people who have extra fat cells, they will inevitably have traumas and filters still in place that they haven't dealt with yet. Right. Right. Yeah. I tell people all the time, especially clients, like you'll start losing weight as you, uh, yeah. as you release spiritual, mental, and emotional traumas. You'll the weight will just come off, and you won't really know why. I mean, Mimi lost sixty pounds here in a few months. I lost a hundred pounds myself at one time, and it's diet and exercise create problems to, to stop losing weight. <laughs> <laughs> diet and exercise are uh, great tools, but also is dealing with undealt with traumas, right. emotional, mental, totally. and spiritual. The, you know, the, we all are having different experiences and we all look different in our bodies, but the bodies, the bodies are designed for, you know, these are like, it's like wearing a space suit in outer space. Well, this is an earth suit in earth. And so mm. they're designed to do certain things, to comply with certain sets of rules and regulations. And one of the things is as we evolve towards a better understanding of the, you know, the fact that we are intrinsically entwined in mind, body, and spirit that the suit is here to work for us. And the second that we're off path, that we're, we're, we're losing sight of what's in front of us, the body will throw up a flag and go, Hey, woohoo. You know, it's like when a woman is over nurturing, what's the first thing she gets breast cancer. It's so predictable now at this stage when you wow. learn how the body works. Um, and when you start learning the tricks of the trade, you're able to avoid those things. And this is why some people got COVID and stayed well. And some people got COVID and died, you know, and then there were a whole bunch of people in between who got really sick. Yeah. 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 I like what you said on another podcast when you said, you know, sometimes we have these uh, major moments and they are because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. And so it's, we kind of need that about face to, to turn around and, and go to where we're supposed to be. So I, I feel that way about like weight loss or, or, 
near death experience, you know, like your body, you're not healthy somewhere, somehow there's something in you that is not, uh, what it should be. And you have this about face moment that, that changes exactly. you. Exactly. And it's, you know, that I think I was referring to in that, in that space going, you know, that, oh, you know, you've had a near death experience. They're so this, I told you, Jerusalem, no more gurus. You <laughs> right. know, it's people who have had near death experiences and came back and were fortunate enough to come back to tell the tale. They didn't have them because they were so highly evolved and doing everything they came here to do. You know, I was right. the one who was writing down the scores to basketball games because I can see things before they happen and then cracking open a beer and, and uh, you know, after the basketball game and going, ah, look here. That was mm -hmm. me serving humanity. Right. So I got a big, big fat smack, broke my neck and went, oh, hang on a second. I remember what I came here for. <laughs> yeah. You, very know, you, you had your near death experience and you had your, you know, your experience, your, your right. addiction and, and that experience. And I had a, a trauma experience that I just was uh, like allowing it to happen, I guess. Mm -hmm. And until it, it blew up. <laughs> Yeah, that's when it that's when I started to like the about face and started taking care of me and fixing me. I love that. That's the first time she's opened up a little bit about uh, anything. So <laughs> that's wonderful that she's ready to open up about that. That that was like a mini. <laughs> hey, it's something. It's a mini. It's we're un unwinding that thread. Absolutely. Uh, it is. So do you want to let the audience know where they can find you? Simple. Mary Helen Hensley dot com. And I'm on. Uh, Facebook under my name, uh, uh, Dr. Mary Helen Hensley, author, um, Mary Helen Hensley on Instagram, whatever, you know, all those things. Um, when I, when I managed to remember to get around to them, <laughs> I'm yeah. still, I'm still trying to digest technology. Yeah. Um, it's tough sometimes. Oh boy. It is. Yeah. So it's, um, it, and I'll, a lot of people reach out for healing sessions, but you know, one of the, the double edged blessing and curse of, of social media is I get after every single podcast inundated with requests for healing to the point where there's just simply not enough years in the <laughs> lifetime to get to it. So right now I'm kind of on a pause where I'm, I'm just working out of my office kind of, I can't do the, um, the distance, uh, work at, because they're just literally not, I would work all day and come home and work all night doing that if that were the case. And so I'm trying to come up with a better way, which is, I don't want to go into podcast world because I love being on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's like, I don't like to cook. I love going to people's houses to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, so what I'm trying to do is create a show at the moment where I'm taking from every single one of these sessions, questions and the most the most popular subject matter that I can and doing a just like a little like a little YouTube show kind of thing um that mm. addresses each of these things. So I'm trying to come up with ways to to still get all the information out there um because I just haven't haven't quite mastered uh multiple locations in a way that is uh <laughs> congruent with the technology available. Right. All right. Well, we'll have all the links in the description. I want you guys to all check out Mary's stuff. This was a wonderful conversation. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the outro and we will see you there. Dr. Mary Helen Hensley, we can hold on a second and we'll say goodbye to the audience. Bye, everybody. All right. Welcome to the outro, everybody. So thank you all for sticking around for Mimi and I, our analysis of what we just talked about and i want to thank you all uh for being here and again if you want to support the show financially patreon.com backslash goodness over darkness uh scrolling across the bottom if you're watching on youtube uh, just like dr mary helen hensley her website was scrolling across the bottom the entire interview if you're watching here on youtube if you don't want to financially support, but you could like, comment, share, subscribe, rate, and review wherever you're watching this from, I'm sure. Any support is welcome. Yeah, I'm sure that it has something on there that you could do. And that would be great for the, the show to grow because, you know, the algorithms, we aren't getting pushed to the top of people's uh, pages. When I look around and I see that my show gets very little views, but I have 
more subscribers on YouTube. I have more followers on Twitter, but I have no interaction on those platforms. I see that I'm not being shown the true numbers or that my show is just really being held back uh, because comparatively to others, it just can't be the, the true numbers. You know, something's uh, not right with that. So if you could just take the extra step of hitting the like, comment, share, subscribe, rate, and review, one of those things that will greatly help the show. So I appreciate all of your kindness and patience. And now let's get into the show a little bit here. So what did you think of our guest, Dr. Mary Helen Hensley? You know, I did forget to bring up, I think it was, oh man, what's her name? Mary Hilda Clark. Is that what it is? It's something Hilda Clark. But the the book that I got that is how to heal or cure any illness has a lot uh, to do with frequency, the cure for all diseases. There it is. Who is it? I have to. Hilda Clark. I was close. What is it? I said yeah, it's Hilda Clark. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. But it, that's exactly what she reminds me, you know, she reminds me of is healing through frequency and sound. And it's very interesting that she can hear a frequency to an illness or, you know, or to something that's, it does really remind me of trying to explain a car noise to a mechanic. That's all I could get. I, commercial. Sometimes if you, if you watch the video, you'll just like see me laughing to myself. It's because I get these thoughts in my head that are funny and I don't either. I do want to say them and I don't have a chance or I, or I do have a chance, but I'm laughing to myself because that's exactly what I hear, just like when she was talking about Monopoly, all my brain is seeing is Jumanji is like, I'm not playing Monopoly. I was dropped into some <laughs> Jumanji, you know? Well, do you remember that triple A commercial? It was like, uh, where people are going to the mechanic, they're doing just like, like guys like it's going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, how does she get him to match? The, like, I want to know, I want to be there when she's like, genius. this is what it sounds like. And then he's like, Oh yeah, I got that right here. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's the pitch yeah. to that noise. Well, he must uh, really know his frequencies, his music, uh, you know, I know. And that's also what I was thinking of. I wish I could, you know, play more music or no more. Uh, I want to be able to hear that kind of thing. I want to be able to hear a certain frequency. You know, I did get an experience of hearing a frequency when the um, hummingbirds are around because I had this oh, experience where I could imagine the sound of their wings and then they would come. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. And I, there's a video out there somewhere of me, uh, Maybe it'll come around since spring's around. It'll come back around. I'll have to repost it. But I I or felt like again. such a weirdo. I was like, guys, this is so strange. But I feel like I'm calling the hummingbirds in at this point. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Because <laughs> this is something that happens to me that I don't know if it happens to other people. But sometimes when I'm just going about my day, something will happen. And I'll hear music in my head, a song that I already know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll hear the full song or maybe not the full song but i'll hear the whole production of the song certain parts of it at least in the way that i know that song to be played have you ever do you hear music that way i do hear music throughout my day sometimes uh that's i've weird. always had that that it's <laughs> when things like sometimes i'll just hear things the entire song usually someone will say something that triggers like a lyric memory and then the song starts playing like okay. you know that's kind of how it works and maybe that's a programming thing i don't you know it's got to be because you know one word to trigger a whole song it can happen and it does happen a lot right. well, or even a certain sound or a certain uh a certain phrase or a certain right. smell will trigger Ultra, something. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with uh, the Transformers, the first Transformers movie of Shia LaBeouf? Not really. Okay, well, maybe <laughs> you'll remember how his car, Bumblebee, spoke to him using the radio. It would be different uh, past radio or movies that he could play through, uh, you know, because Bumblebee didn't have a voice. It would have to play old snippets of something on the radio or songs. And that's how it would talk like that's yeah. with. Okay. Well, that's how I feel sometimes 
like something will happen outside of me and it will trigger something inside of me to play that song in Mm -hmm. my head for whatever reason yeah that makes sense Uh, i can see that it's like um being communicated with because i have all these different clips and phrases already in my mind you know bumblebee is a vehicle for shia labeouf just like my body is the vehicle for my spirit and at different times i for whatever reason different sound clips are played to communicate something Mm -hmm. that because it can mean more to you because there's so much going on with the song they're very specific to you of right. course right and there's right. so much more going on with the song and so much production and i've had this my entire life i don't know that uh everyone does i only thought about it just the other day that maybe it's something that i well it's like when it you said free your mind and i was like here it goes yeah that song there it goes yeah, it's that's playing in my in head my too. <laughs> uh, yeah and then she, the, yeah. Do- dr mary helen hensley was singing Finished it. it off yeah, yeah. she did yeah, because that's, you know, that's one of those phrases, like Mimi said, it's programmed into all of us to uh, to have that. And it's not only that, but I actually see uh, in my mind, because I saw this on Modern Family, it's not something that I even watch all that often, but it, back when it first came out, the, the gay couple, the skinny guy, uh, he was surprised by uh, the fat guy, his husband, joined this uh i don't even know what they call it, but they break out in song in the middle of nowhere like a cabaret type thing i don't know uh, that's okay. not the name of it uh but they everyone just breaks out in song and dance that they've oh, been practicing flash dance. yeah okay flash, flash mob yeah. yeah flash mob yeah so i see because at the very end they said that's the song they do it to so i that i see the end when they're like free your mind <laughs> and you know the whole thing i but see that the, the funny here. thing is that there are people that do not know that song that that will not resonate and will not click and will not be programmed in there right that's, yeah that's the magic of of media <laughs> of earth you yeah. know of, of being here you know yeah yeah this was a, a great conversation i think that mm. we learned a lot i think it's very interesting that uh she used the two mystics she used edgar casey yes. and emmanuel swedenborg they're both christians so you know there is something it's like there's obviously something to what she's talking about but there's also something to jesus christ that he is the creator of everything and those two gentlemen knew it very well and they knew it in a mystical sense as well as in a biblical sense. Mm-hmm. So, you know, while everyone likes to talk about Edgar Casey being a healer and a seer and all of that, like, yes, he was those things. But it was under the foundation Ooh, of Jesus Christ chills. as his Lord and Savior. Okay. Before he even said it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you said but. Yeah. Because th- it's very true that... and. Uh, Christianity, the way that it's presented, it's very boxed in and held down. So people, they get frustrated and they they understand there's more to life. I was just going to say, I feel like a lot of people instinctually know there's there's more. Right. There's more. And uh, Josh Monday and I were just talking about this earlier uh, in the morning here. We were talking about how uh, people are being brought into the new age because they realize that there's more than just what the church is bringing people. There's a, even a stepping stone. I even believe. when people get brought into conspiracy land mm-hmm. because they realize that the Nephilim is something that's a term that's in the Bible. And, and the old Testament is about these bloodlines that are still ruling today. Yeah. It really just opens you up and the church doesn't talk about it. I can tell you in the Catholic church and the Methodist church and the Baptist church and all the churches I've been to, not one person has ever told me about Nephilim or bloodlines or, or even bloodlines or serpent seed or, or anything like that. Like nobody's ever mentioned those things. It's just like, you know, 10 commandments, Jesus, apostles, that's it. <laughs> right. You know, at revelations. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they just really want to use that fear tactic because it maybe it worked right. for them and it made them understand life uh, that they had to be 
strict or devout in certain aspects yeah. to deny the body because you do have to deny the body. I didn't even know the the word Nephilim until like two years ago. Well, say there you, you know, go. or even like Raphaim or Elohim. It's like maybe I heard it here and there, but it was never explained. Right. Yeah. And now, you know, what we're doing with the podcast, we bring on people mm -hmm. with certain expertise. And here's just another one, Dr. Mary Helen Hensley. She has an expertise in vibration and frequency. She has very unique experiences. She has her guide is or has been her grandfather, which it's interesting. Uh, you know, this came up, a thought came up is she was saying uh, that if they were leading her astray, you know, that they haven't shown her anything but love yet. Well, uh, I, I didn't say it in the show, but fallen angels, they present themselves in a certain way. And it's not because they're going to hurt you here, but they're going to keep you stuck here because you're not evolving out of the thought because uh, you're being taken away from the one true creator who is Jesus Christ, because they're not talking about Jesus Christ when, uh, you know, she was taken out of Christianity and not, I don't know what her relationship is with Jesus at the moment, but that is one way that it doesn't really matter that they're uh, not hurting her. They're just spreading their false light, and she's then using that to spread their false light. Not that she's doing that, but that could be what it is, because that's how I think it all works. And I've said this before many times that they... They just want to spread their false message over Jesus Christ's true message. And, you know, it gets kind of lost in translation when people think that they're going to be affected, like someone's going to come up and bully them and uh, beat them up and take their purse when, no, they're going to marry you. They're going to give you this fake name and all this fake stuff in order to then marry you. And then they're going to steal your inheritance and they're going to walk out the door and you're going to come home from work one day and everything's going to be gone. And you're going to have to watch some video that's going to show you that, oh, she wasn't who she said she was. And I shouldn't even bother coming after her because she has all this dirt on me now. Uh, and that's some show that Mimi and I watched not too long ago. But that's what it is. They steal your inheritance of going home to heaven. And by doing this over and over again, you know, if... Uh, you know, that was a very interesting download that I got right in the middle of it was the spirit is doing it over and over again, but the soul isn't. The soul is being plopped in. And if that's the case, we're only doing it over and over again because we haven't gotten things right. And what is the one thing that the Bible talks about is when everybody bows the knee to Jesus Christ, that is when it ends. So we won't be doing it over and over again once we all understand and have him. That is... Uh, you get this beautiful vision life. of this like fractal flower bowing, like everyone just... <laughs> well, I actually had that one time when I popped out of my body and then I was popping back in. It was like I was outside of the bubble of creation. And then as I was coming in, you know that the way a light shines on a bubble... Mm -hmm. is that everything is bending and curving. Mm -hmm. So I saw, because I was outside of it, everything looked like it was bowing to me, you know, as I was up. And then as I'm coming in, it's all bowing. And then as I got into it, everything stood back up. But it was bowing to me, curving, as I was exiting and then entering again. Mm. So I, was, I remember that. Yeah. Greatly fascinating stuff. Oh, and the, so I think that'll do it for the show. But there was one dream that I wanted to talk about um, that happened. And the only reason I'm going to talk about it is because of the guest we just had on talking about celestial visitors. And last night I saw something on Instagram that was like, whoa, that's weird. So I had this dream on Thursday. I that, can vouch. Yeah, that I told her about this <laughs> on Thursday. Uh, we can, you know, pull up. Uh, we didn't text it. We just talked it on the, over the phone. But I had this dream. So when I went to go meet my grandson, I took my sparrow gear 
bag with me so that I had my phone in the Sparrow gear bag, which is going to block the frequency so that it wasn't affecting him. So I usually uh, keep it in my pocket, but because the shorts I was wearing, it, it would have fell out. So I took my phone out of my pocket while I was driving and I left the Sparrow gear bag in my car. So when I go to sleep that night, I didn't have it with me. I didn't have my phone to put it in, which I've had now since Matthew Landman was on the show. He sent that to he us kindly. It, his phone in all the time. Yeah, every single night. <laughs> and yeah. so Mimi couldn't sleep that night. So I have my phone next to me, not in the Sparrow gear bag so that it could be manipulated. The energy of it could be manipulated. Mimi goes out in the other room, watches a TV show called The Magicians, which is directly behind my head. And it's a school of adult magicians that are, you know, doing magic. And now I didn't know this, but when I was sleeping, I slept very hard. I only got like six hours of sleep and I was very well rested when I woke up because I was not in my body for that. You know, time didn't work the same way. My body got plenty of rest. So what ends up happening? I was in this dream. I was, contacted by all of these the school of magicians and they were all with me and they were all celebrities all of them they were all celebrities britney spears was my teacher and i was her favorite student and it was britney spears and kanye west were the two that i was uh, communicating with and it was kanye west with bleached hair it wasn't him with uh, black hair it was him with bleached hair so we're all like communicating and I was just her favorite student. She's telling me uh, that uh, that I had to, or that they were, they left the earth, that they're from Venus, they're Venusians, they left earth and that the only remains of them now are clones here on earth. And it was, I mean, it was a ton of celebrities and that they were in the ship hanging above our home and that I was not just dreaming, but I was actually, my astral body was with them in the ship that, and we were in a certain spot that was like a classroom, like a high school type of classroom. And they said to me that, you know, we're leaving the earth and it was uh, because they've taken their attention off of us enough so that uh, we could escape. And instead of escaping, you've chosen to stay, to take their, uh, to take the arrows for us, essentially, that you could have escaped, but you weren't done with your mission. So you're staying here on Earth to see it out completely. And then they they were like, so everything you see, all the celebrities you've been seeing, they're all clones. They're, none of them are the actual souls that all the souls have left. And this was on, this was from Wednesday into Thursday. Or no, I'm sorry, from Thursday into Friday. Okay, like mega goosebumps. Okay, so <laughs> like mega. So then you're standing up. I see yesterday, <laughs> last night. So this today is Sunday. Now the first day of spring that I'm recording this. So last night, the last day of winter, what do I say on Instagram right before I go to bed? Is that Britney Spears' Instagram was shut down on Wednesday and there it was this meme that said, Where did Britney go? And that's all it was. And I'm like, are you kidding me? The, the <laughs> day before I had this crazy. So why I said about my technology, my phone being in the Sparrow gear bag and Mimi watching the television right behind the back of my head is because I've been telling everyone that is how they communicate with us. That's where these energies come from and out of is through our technology. So it it was set up so that I would leave my bag in the car so that because I wasn't going to go out and get it late at night and Mimi couldn't sleep in the bed. So she had to go out and turn the TV on and the TV wasn't just any show, but it was the show called the magicians. So, and I only knew that because when I woke up, I walked out there and I saw that, you know, it said, do you want to continue playing? And it was said the magicians and I'm like, son of a gun. So, what they were communicating to me was not just that they left, that the souls left uh, or the astral bodies left and that there are only clones left here as the celebrities, but that these, when I was going through all of my etheric surgery and everything, that they decided 
because I couldn't trust anything because there were things attacking me, pretending to be them, as well as them, that I developed this relationship with Jesus that I had to cling on to Jesus and only Jesus. So they had to leave me alone completely. But they're not all evil. They're not all demons. Uh, what we think of in celestial terms or aliens or whatever, that they're not all just evil, that I was also in contact with this good group that was helping so that not all of my memories are as they seem, but I just haven't remembered. I, for whatever reason, I wasn't trying to remember the good times because the evil times were forefront of my mind. So they left me so that I could develop this relationship with Jesus so that I could know the full truth of everything. And that is just so crazy that her Instagram page got taken down the day before. So that's why I brought it up because I saw that last night and I'm like, wow, that is intense. So I figured I'll just throw it in at the end of this episode because we talked about celestial beings in this episode and that they're not all evil. And we don't know exactly they, you know, angels of light do come as familiar spirits, but there's also just familiar spirits that may be around to help because that's what their job is. And we can't know for sure what's what and who's who. So when I recommend Jesus, it's because we know who he is. We know what he stands for. And that's all you need in order to get all the other understandings, because you could be being infiltrated by multiple things at once and having great experiences with some and terrible experiences with some. And you don't know what's what because they both look alike and they both sound alike and and they both present themselves in the same way. So if you just remove all of it by clinging to Jesus Christ, then you'll be okay. All right. So uh, do you have anything else, my love? That is all. All right. So if you want to be part of the Bible study, you know, uh, drop me an email with the subject Bible study, uh, the Patreon. Make sure you go to patreon.com backslash goodness over darkness. Sign up there. Once I get to 15 Patreon members, I will be doing a giveaway of DVDs and books uh, or some combination thereof uh, and CDs as well of different material that involves, uh, you know, extra biblical type of information that will help you understand the coming deception and why God isn't a tyrant in the Old Testament, but he's actually just knocking off the serpent seed. He's getting because they're being killed by the humans are being killed by the serpent seed. So he wants to kill the serpent seed. So make sure you guys check that out. And uh, we're going to close with a prayer. So Mimi wasn't here last night for that one, but I decided I want to close with a prayer every uh, episode. So, let us pray. Okay, this is new. Yes, it is. Well, it's new for you. It's the second time for the audience now. All right. All right. So, dear God, we want to thank you for all of these opportunities that you are presenting us with. We want to thank you for all of these connections that you are creating. We want to thank you for all of the beautiful understandings and wonderful people that we are coming in contact with that are helping change the world. We want to thank you for allowing us to be vessels for your light and truth and energy and love. And we just want to thank you for providing us and guiding us in all things that we do and all the things that come to us on earth. We really appreciate everything. We want to ask for peace and holiness and love amongst everybody who's hearing this. We want to ask for healing and protection and guidance for everyone that is hearing this. And we would all really love to be able to bring the kingdom of heaven down here on earth while we are still all physically alive and recreate heaven on earth as it is in heaven, so it should be on earth. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. We will talk to you later. See you on the next one. Bye.